guys. It's great to see you again. I'm Ms. Jolie, and I'll be your visual artist for this lesson. It's Women's History Month, so today we're going to talk about the famous Mexican artist Frida Kahlo. And uh, we're going to be creating a portrait of her. The materials we're going to need, sheet of paper, pencil and eraser, and a little cup of crayons. Frida Kahlo was a Mexican painter known for mixing traditional Mexican folk art with surrealism. Surrealism is a form of painting that is inspired by dreams and using images that are symbols of other things. Frida, however, argued that she drew from her reality and not her dreams. I never paint dreams or nightmares. I paint my own reality. When Frida was young, she was enrolled in a prestigious school where she was studying medicine. While there, she was in a terrible trolley accident that broke nearly all of her bones. She healed and was able to walk again, but the pain remained with her for the rest of her life. After the accident, she decided to devote herself to painting. At a young age, she married the famous painter Diego Rivera, who usually worked on large painted murals of the working class in Mexico. Frida paintings were much more personal. She painted many self-portraits and many works about her heritage. Frida had monkeys, dogs, a deer, a variety of birds. Some of these birds included parakeets, macaws, hens, and sparrows. However, the, the bird she most often painted was her a parrot named Bonito. She was also photographed with uh, her pet eagle, Gertrudis Cacablanca. This is Frida's house. Uh, Frida and Diego Rivera lived in the house in 1934 till they divorced in 1939. After it became her studio, it's called La Casa Azul. And if, like I said, it was her childhood home and residence. Now she lived from uh, 1939 to 1954. That's when she died. And um, they also had gardens, um, the gardens at La Casa Azul. And in 1958, it was uh, turned into a museum dedicated to Frida Kahlo. Here is Little People, Big Dreams, Frida Kahlo. It's written by Isabel Sanchez Vergara, and it's illustrated by G. Fan Ng. Kahlo was born in Mexico. Just by looking at her, you could see she was special. When she was at school, she got really sick. The illness made her leg as skinny as a rake. But Frida didn't complain. She was different. She liked to dress differently too. That's Frida on the far left. She's dressed in pants. She liked to hide her leg sometimes when she was dressing. One day, a bus Frida was riding crashed into a car. Life as she knew it changed forever. After her accident, Frida had to rest in bed. To help the hours pass, she drew pictures of her foot. Then, even though she was still in pain, Frida decided to draw self-portraits using a mirror. Painting by painting, Frida and her art got better. It was time to show her pictures to someone else. She visited the famous artist Diego Rivera, who couldn't believe his eyes. He wasn't sure what he liked more, the pictures or her. 
Frida and Diego fell in love. They were so similar and yet so different. But through their ups and downs, Diego encouraged Frida in her paintings. Through her wonderful pictures, Frida spoke about how she was feeling. In some she looked sad, but in others she smiled. Frida decided to show everyone her work. Her pictures caused a great stir in New York City. Mission came to Mexico. Frida was so ill she had to be in bed. But it was clear that nothing could stop her from painting. Not illness, pain, or heartache. Frida Kahlo taught the world to wave goodbye to bad things and say, Viva la vida. Live life. Let's take a look at some of Frida's work. Frida did many self-portraits. I paint myself because I am alone. I paint myself because I am the subject I know best. Frida only became famous internationally after her death. Her paintings are instantly recognizable because of their bright colors and symbols of Mexican culture and have been sold for millions of pounds around the world. Thanks to her strong personality, fighting spirit, and love of painting, Frida overcame the accident that marked her life. She is an inspiration to many women today. So the first thing we're going to do is add our name, of course, and I'll put my name. I'll do mine closer to this side of paper. Oh, maybe this, that'll work. <clears throat> and I'll flip it over. And I'm going to be doing mine in marker. Now we're going to think about Frida Kahlo. We're going to think about her portrait. We're going to think about all the great women in the world, or women of history. We're honoring Women's History Month because the women were our unsung heroes. Um, sometimes their contributions went unnoticed. They were as much a vital part of our history as the men whose names we all know. So here's our paper. And what shape is a head? You can say circle, oval, More oval. Sometimes you may even have a heart shape, uh, uh, kind of, uh, or egg shape. Okay? So we're going to think about our head. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and take our paper and kind of fold it together. We will be using it. In fact, let's go ahead and fold it all the way in four. So that when we open it up, we can see okay, we can see our papers in four. This will be totally fine, it won't hurt our paper any at all. Okay, we have a circle. oval egg shape. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead. I am going to start about eh, four fingers down from the top. See how I measured it at the very, very top? About four fingers down, I'm putting me a little dot right there. I'm going to put me a little dot right there. I'm going to take that dot and I'm going to come out. Almost like a really wide capital A. Just wait and let me do it for you on both sides. Okay, like a really wide capital A. And Frida Kahlo had long hair, so um, very wide capital A. And then I'm going to come about midway, and I'm going to come further down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of fingers off the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and bring a curve 
all the way to that line and bring another curve all the way to that line. All right, so we have our curve. On the very line here, I'm going to go ahead and do a um, curve line, kind of looks like the, almost like a little rainbow, okay? And I'm going to see how the, my distance is here. I'm going to skip my distance here and do another one. We have almost like an eye space, an eye space distance in the middle where our nose would be. Now we're going to do a curve going under and another curve going under. Okay. The very center, of course, this is the pupil and our iris. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to go ahead and do a line up. That's good. I can leave them and use eyelashes a little later. And another curve going up. Now above the eyes, right above the eyes, is where we have an eyebrow. And another eyebrow on the other side. Well, I kind of went through a little far, but it's okay. And I'm going to go ahead and come around and do my eyebrows. Connecting here. Frida Kahlo's eyebrows were big and thick. Okay. In fact, she had her eyebrows actually went across. It's called a unibrow. My dad had a unibrow. Okay, so that's our eyebrows. Um, we're going to come... Uh, Let's see. You can take a sheet of paper. Think about it. And if you want to do a nose that looks like an upside down number seven. Okay. And if you want to do something like that, that would work. You could do noses all different kinds of ways. You can do a nose that curves. Okay. You decide. Um, just do a a line or that will work. Look, just a little line. I'm going to just curve mine a little bit. Now, um, actually on both sides of your nose, we have a little, like, like a little bitty hill and a little bitty hill on this side and then it curves around. Just to give you a little more idea. You don't have to do it all. You can just stop there and be fine. Now, a little space, about a finger space down. Let's go ahead and put a little V. I'm going to put a little V. And we're going to go ahead and draw a line. A lot of Frida's artwork, uh, she had, um, her face was um, just plain. Not really angry looking, or could be sorrowful. It could be um, just take me as I am type. And then underneath, we're going to go ahead and give us a lip. You can go all the way to the end if you like, or you don't have to. All right. Now, when we see the eyebrow and the nose, right in this space here, we're going to do a little curve line, a little curve line off the end. In fact, um, yeah, let's see. That's my curve. And my curve goes across here, so... Now, let's see, let's go ahead and put us some, I guess I just like to do curves. She always had her hair up anyway. Oops. I could do another. I should have done a curve right there, but that's good. That will work. Let's go ahead and put a few little circles in. This is just going to hold us a place here. Since we have the curves, I'm going to go ahead and think of uh, putting some curves closer to the end. Because Frida had her hair braided a lot.
Now these three little uh, circles, you can put more. Let's think about this. How could we draw flowers? Think about the flowers. You could draw a flower with a circle and just put your petals going around, four or five petals. And you could draw coming down. I kind of like those. You can draw longer ones, daisy looking ones, but they got to be thinner. In fact, you can add more. This is the style I'm going to do. And there's other different ways to do them. I'm going to just stay nice, plain, easy, and simple. And I'm going to put another row around it. I think I'm going to use all three of those flowers. She liked flowers quite a bit. Uh, let's see, you can put more flowers. You can put a whole row of them. Uh, I'm going to put uh, two more here. This one's a little, this is going to be more daisy looking. If you want to add some leaves in there, you can. If you're doing this with your pencil, you can always erase it. If you're using your black crayon, it does not uh, erase very well. And let's see, right here, I'm going to just go ahead and just bring it down. That's going to be a little rose I have in her hair. Maybe one here. And you can put more if you like. You can put more on the sides. I'm going to come down from the eyes. From the eyes, uh, actually, I'm gonna come right underneath the eyes. I'm going to go ahead and put two lines coming down. That would be her what? Her neck, right? Uh, about a finger space or two. I'm going to go ahead and put me a circle here. She loved to wear jewelry. Frida loved to wear jewelry. So I. I start with one quite large in the middle, and then I keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller as I go. And, and actually looping around the back of the neck. And this side, same thing, the reverse way. These look like you're doing the letter C. Now I'm going to put uh, just some curves to represent a shawl. A shawl is like a, something that you wrap, it's like a large towel that you wrap yourself with. Let's not forget some earrings, okay, this is the first one. Now you can use different types of shapes. I'm going to use shapes. Uh, if you would like to do a butterfly, in fact, if you'd like to put a butterfly in the hair, you can. Start off with an oval, and you can just go ahead, and that could be a fabulous little butterfly. Okay. Uh, the next, I'm going to jump it down and put a square. Or a rectangle. I'm going to put another circle. And I'm going to do a triangle. But if you want to put a butterfly at the very bottom, by all means, go ahead. She liked Native American jewelry, so I could think of it being some type of Native American jewelry. Maybe I could loop something here and bring a straight line coming down from that. That'd be her earrings. 
all right? So we have our artwork here. Now we, what we need to do is color it up. Oh, let's go ahead and add some eyelashes. Uh, I usually start about the midway. Just a little zigzag of work. It's always harder to do on this side for me. That works. And I could bush it out. She didn't, uh, she always kept thick eyebrows. All right. So we're going to get to color this up. Uh, we'll need uh, brown for the eyes. You're going to do Frida. If you would prefer to do, think of your mom in that respect, that would be fabulous. You could actually give this to your mom. Does your mom ever wear flowers in her hair? And let's see, her eyebrows, of course, would be in the black. Cross. If you don't finish, don't worry about it. You can always, you know, if you have to whenever you take it home, or if you have a chance to do it during a break. I will be coloring her hair black. I'm going to come back to that. Oops, sorry. I'm going to go ahead and do some lips. And uh, actually, I'm gonna put the center of some of those flowers. The, the one, these here, I'm gonna put with orange. And I'm gonna color those with my red. They have all kinds of colors for flowers. It all depends what kind of flower it is. And roses, too. Actually, last year I got some roses that were rainbow colored. What they do is when they get the white rose, they cut up the bottom of the stem and stick it in um, different colored water. And that will, the leaves, the, the petals, excuse me, will collect different colors up to the flower. So I am going to go ahead and use yellow. You can use any color you want because these are your flowers. And I think I'm going to do orange roses just because I don't like to put the same color next to each other. See how we take a simple curve and it just looks like the, she braided her hair a lot. And then a lot of times she wore um, ribbons in her hair. She interwove the ribbons in her hair. I'll come around. I'm gonna have to color the whole hair black here. Our hair was very, very, very dark brown. Almost black looking. It's beautiful color. Beautiful hair. Oh, I forgot to put a little color on my earrings. circles and my blue 
from my other shapes. Speaking of blue, I uh, usually put a line around each one, and then I trace it with white. That's usually what I do with these. I don't have a point anymore on this color, and I haven't had a chance to make one by, by using it. And then I color it up with white. A peachy color or a light brown. She was uh, in the sun quite a lot, so her color would be a, a darker shade. You can mix the colors if you like. You can put the skin tone color of your mom if you'd like. We're just about finished with our time. Like I said, you'll be able to do this and add more to it. Remember this artist? This was Frida Kahlo. She was a Mexican artist. Actually, this is what I did to the artwork. This is the color I went with. But you can decorate yours however you'd like. And keep working to finish it up. Take a moment and view your artwork. View your neighbor's artwork. Notice the similarities and the differences between your artworks. Remember, we're all unique. Thanks for joining me today. We've learned so many things. We talked about uh, the famous female Mexican artist, Frida Kahlo, and we created a portrait of her. Uh, as you're going through your week, Notice uh, the stories you hear of women. Uh, what obstacles did they have to face? Um, how did they contribute uh, to society? How could you contribute to society? How could you make the world a better place? Uh, think about uh, and notice the different stories you may hear of special people who have overcome obstacles. Enjoy the rest of your day. I can't wait to see you next time.